So by now you should have RetroArch downloaded, updated using the online updater, gamepad set up and usable in RetroArch, and you have a core downloaded. Uh, now it's time to start playing the games. First, in order to play the games, you're going to need ROMs. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you where to find them. Um, but when you do have your ROMs, uh, I would recommend that you put them in a ROMs folder somewhere. Um, you can put it inside of RetroArch if you want. Me personally, I am going to put it on the root of my D drive, create a folder, name it ROMs, and then put some ROMs in there. Um, here are a couple that uh, I have that I'm going to uh, showcase to you. I have Contra in a .7-zip format. I have Super Mario Brothers in a .zip format. And I have the Famicom Disk System uh, ROM for the Super Mario Brothers 2. And I'm doing this to show you that RetroArch can load, uh, at least the Windows version I know, uh, can load 7-zip, zip, and then just the normal uh, uncompressed uh, game. So now that I have them in uh, my ROMs folder, uh, let's go ahead and open up RetroArch. And all you got to do is go to load core, load your mess in core, and, or whatever core you're using. Go to load content, go to where it's, uh, your ROMs are stored, so D drive, ROMs, and let's play some Contra. And you can do either browse archive or load archive. Either one will do the same. Uh, I just typically go browse archive and then click on the name of the game. And here you go. Uh, I have the music. Oh, I don't have the music muted. Hold on. There we go. So sound is muted, so I can, uh, you know, so you guys can hear me. But uh, there we go. I'm using my uh, gamepad to play Contra. Uh, like I said, I am using the Xbox One S controller, and in this setup. The X button is would be the B button on an NES controller. The A button would be the jump button on the NES controller. Um, but if you're looking to see what does what, uh, if you remember earlier, we set up a button combo to bring up the quick menu. That would be pushing in both analog sticks on my Xbox One S controller, which is the L3 and R3 buttons. So from here in the quick menu, I can go to controls. And in here, uh, I can go to, all right, so yeah, it tells me exactly what all my, uh, the buttons are. On the far right, it tells you what the Nintendo controller buttons are. So A, B, select, start, D-pad, up, down, left, right, and the turbo buttons. And that is mapped to, um, if you look next to auto, it says A, and then in parentheses, button. And underneath that, it says it's my X input controller, which is my Xbox controller. So to hit A on the NES controller is button A on my gamepad. Uh, B would be button X. Um, select is the what is the back button. Uh, start is the start button. And up, down, left, right. So there you go. If you want to change these, you can. Um, but as I said in an earlier video... Um, it's pretty much good as is. Um, so let's see. So that's Contra, which is 7-zip. Uh, you can hit close content. Go back. Um, now to make it a little bit easier, if you go to your settings, go all the way down to directory. And you can go to file browser. And you can change that to your ROM directory. So D ROMs use this directory. Now what that is going to do is now when I go to load content, I can click start directory and it takes me right to my ROM directory uh, rather than having to go through D, look for ROMs and et cetera, et cetera. So um, through here, uh, let me load content again, start directory. I'll show you Super Mario Brothers. That is a zip file. 
Again, browse archive, Super Mario World NES, and here's Super Mario Brothers. And again, it plays very well. Um, and I'll get out of this, close content, back. And now, um, one other thing I want to show you, Messin is also a Famicom disk system uh, emulator. And I want to show you what happens without changing anything else in here if I try to load Super Mario Bros. 2. If you notice on the bottom left, it now says fail to, uh, it went by real quick, but it just failed to load. Um, it tried to load, but it failed. So why? What went wrong? Well, if you go to um, load core, well, Messin is already loaded, as we can see in the lower left. And if you scroll down to information, go to core information, and read through the core information, you'll see that under firmwares, it says missing required disksys.rom for the family computer disk system BIOS. And it even tells you that disksys.rom needs to have an MD5 hash of that string of letters and numbers there. So um, let me show you how you can find it. I can't tell you where to find it because it's copyrighted. Uh, it's copyrighted file. Um, but I can tell you that I did a, using a quick search, the BIOSes I was able to find relating to the Famicom disk system were these three right here. Family Computer Disk System Japan Rev1.bin, uh, Family Computer Disk, uh, Disk System Japan.bin, and Twin Famicom Japan.bin. So how do I know which one of these is the right one? I guess I could try each one and, and see what happens. But a better thing is, like, look at this uh, MD5 hash right here. That is a unique number to each uh, file here. And if you find one that matches that exactly, then you know you have the right one. So how do you find that? I use a program called HashCalc. And to find it, just do a Google search for HashCalc. H-A-S-C-A-L-C. And you'll see the first top uh, link is to Slavasoft.com. And you have HashCalc. 2.02. Click on that, download it to wherever you want. Uh, I'll download it to my desktop. Save it. It downloaded. So now I will extract it and I use 7-zip. You can use whatever zipping program you want to uh, unzip it. But I do unzip and then extract here and I have the setup file. Double click that. Yes. This will install HashCal 2.02. Next, accept the agreement. Next, this is where it's going to install it. Next, next, create a desktop icon if you want that. Next, and then install. And it is now all done. So I don't want to view the README, and uh, let's launch uh, HashCal. So. So this right here is HashCalc, and as you see, you have uh, check boxes next to MD5, MD4, all these things that you can do. Um, right now, it's only giving us the MD5 hash. So I'm going to uncheck SHA1, uh, this one here, and CRC32. And all you got to do is it's easy as drag and drop your BIOS file onto here. Why? Hold on. Why is that not working? All right, I don't know why dragging and dropping. Dragging and dropping used to work. Let me try closing it out and opening it up again. Um, hash calc. There we go. For some reason, I had to close it out and open it back up again. But so for this one, the Twin Famicom BIOS, uh, it gave me an MD5 of C1A9E, etc. Does not match that. All right, so let's try this one right here. Nope, that one is D7F3, not CA30. 
So let's try this uh, Rev 1. And I have CA30, B50F, ending in 5E, F7A. So here we go. I have a perfect match. That is wonderful. So now I know that this is the, uh, the BIOS file that I need. And if you look here, it needs to be labeled as disk sys.rom. And uh, capitalization uh, actually matters. So this has to be exactly all lowercase. So you can click on this and change it to disk sys dot rom. And if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes. Um, now, if for whatever reason you don't show the file extensions here, um, you're going to have to search for how to enable that, I believe. Let's see. View options. Uh, view. Yeah. So... So click the View tab, the Options button here, and then under Advanced Settings, you can scroll down and look for, it should say something about, showing the drive extension. Okay, here you go. Hide extensions for known file types. You want that unchecked, so that way you will see the, the file extensions. So uh, if for whatever reason you don't have the dot bin there uh, or the dot extension there, this is what you need to do, apply OK. If you don't do that and your extension is hidden, as you saw, this was originally a bin file. If I would have changed it to uh, disksys.rom, it really would have been disksys.rom.bin. It wouldn't have shown the dot bin here, but it would have been there. So just keep that in mind if you're having trouble. Make sure that you have the file extension shown. And when you're done, the type shows uh, ROM here. Anyway, so now that we have that, where do we put this file? The uh, core information doesn't tell me. I mean, it does tell me that HD packs go here, custom palettes go here. Where does the BIOS go? Well, again, as I always do, I will refer you to the docs. And if you click docs here, you go to users, you go to core documentation, uh, you can look at the BIOS Information Hub. This will give you a lot of good information about uh, BIOSes. Um, and for here, uh, let's see, NES Famicom for Messin. This will take me right, right to it. I mean, I could have also went to uh, Nintendo Cores, uh, the Messin Core, and then uh, scroll down, but this is fine here. So... Required or optional firmware files go in the front end's system directory. All right, great. Now, what is your system directory? Let's go open this up again, and let's go back, and let's go back to settings and directory. And if you scroll down to, let's see, where is system? There you go. System slash BIOS. We have our system directory set to D uh, RetroArc system. So that's where that uh, disk sys.rom file needs to go. So let's go and move that. So I will go to my RetroArc folder and I will go to system and I will just drag and drop disk sys.rom right to that folder. Now, let me make this full screen again. Let's back out of this. Go to our uh, information, uh, the mess in core is loaded. So if I go to information, I can go to core information and scroll down. And if you look where it's under firmwares, where it said missing before, now it says present. So that means that I have the right um, capitalization, the right, I renamed it correctly. It has the correct MD5 hash. Now when I go to load content, go to my start directory, go to Super Mario Brothers 2, and here we go. And now I have the Super Mario Brothers 2 on the Famicom Disk System uh, running. And for those of you uh, who are not familiar with this game, this was the 
real Super Mario Brothers 2 that was released in uh, Japan, um, and but we didn't get this version. We got uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 that we all know now, and this was rebranded later on on the Super Mario All Stars for Super Nintendo as Ma Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels. Um, just uh, in case you were wondering what this was, I was playing. Um, so yeah, close content. And that's it. Uh, the steps that I made to get this mess and core working and get the games running, you can apply uh, these tips and tricks to uh, any core and any game you want to load. Obviously, uh, that's not going to work for everything. But uh, future videos, I am going to be doing more specific uh, tutorials for setting up you know, your ROMs, making sure you have a no intro set how uh, I go about organizing everything and getting them all to show up in RetroArch. Um, and we'll, uh, that's pretty much it. I hope this uh, helped you guys out. If you have any questions or concerns or you didn't understand something that I was saying, please let me know, and I uh, will do my best to help you out. Thank you.